Hello, everybody. Well, today we're going to put it all together. We're going to do a link, a total link budget. So, uh, just as a review, uh, and and I'm going to start from the output first. So the first thing is is that uh, first device we want to talk about is a modem. And this is a demodulator. Now the function of a modem is, is to take the baseband signal that's encoded, uh, that's got information on it, and turn it into uh, a digital signal of ones and zeros out here. And we're going to characterize this device in a minute. All right, this modem is now hooked to a receiver. All right, and in a modern receiver, the first device they encounter is a low noise amplifier. And that device uh, is characterized by, by some noise. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So in our case, we have a signal coming in from the antenna at 400 megahertz. And this receiver then down converts it into what we call baseband, uh, which is typically um, a 0 to a 20 kilohertz signal here. This modem converts that signal into ones and zeros. Now continuing on our circuit is that this thing is pointing, is looking up at an antenna out here. And hopefully this antenna now is not pointing at the horizon. And it's looking toward the satellite. All right, and the satellite has an antenna on it. And uh, hooked to that is a transmitter. So we're going to characterize these devices as we go. So uh, let's talk about the modem. And I'm going to uh, do that with the help of a curve. And let me uh, bring that up. All right, and here's the curve. And uh, this, uh, this curve <clears throat> here was essentially uh, predicted by Shannon. And, uh, and you here in your communication career, you hear a lot about Shannon. And we'll leave that to others to talk to you about that. So let's talk about this thing. This thing, this curve, is a particular to a, diff a particular type of modulation. And the modulation that this curve applies to is frequency shift keying. And we will encode information uh, onto our radio signal by changing the frequency. So the frequency shifts. It uh, changes from a 1 to 0. So this is called frequency shift key. On the y-axis is the bit error rate. All right. And these numbers are, uh, the bit error rate is described as uh, 10 to uh, to e to the minus 6, which implies that we're going to lose one bit every million bits sent. Or 10 to the minus 6. And 10 to the minus 6 is kind of a magic number because radio engineers tend to design circuits that produce only drop in one bit in every million cent. All right, and what this curve says is that at, at we want one bit error every billion cent, million cent, we essentially need to have down here on this axis an energy per bit, energy a bit energy per unit noise of 14 dB. So today we're going to take the special case where the carrier to noise is exactly equal to the EB over N0. All right. Now the carrier, uh, the carrier we will learn is also called the received signal level. So in a link budget, we will have to calculate the carrier. And that's the amount of signal getting to the receiver. And then we will have to figure out how much noise it gets into the receiver. So now let's go back 
let's go back to uh, our system, and uh, and we're gonna and we're gonna put it all together. So here we go. All right. So let's start with our modem. We're gonna start at the back end first, and uh, get all these buttons right. We're gonna start it all at the back end first. So. We, we're designing this system to produce uh, one bit error every million cent. And this is the modem. And we look from the last curve and, the, and its performance, its carrier to noise, its input here needs to be <clears throat> 14 dB, which is this quantity uh, the required, where is our required? Right here. It's this number right here. Alright, so what what feeds this? Well, a receiver feeds this. Alright, so here's a receiver. Alright, and remember it's got an amplifier in here that generates noise. And from previous videos, we, uh, we, can, we can quantify that noise by its equivalent temperature. And a pretty good LNA has a, a T sub A, T, T sub receiver, T sub R of equal to about 100 degrees Kelvin. All right. Now that goes to an antenna. And let's assume this antenna is uh, pointing up in the sky, typically off the horizon, maybe 30 degrees or something. And, and tracing the signal back, it travels. And in our example for a CubeSat, perhaps 2,000 miles. So the distance over here is 2,000 miles. All right, and that and that is fed into our link equations uh, under this characteristic right here. And it goes to an antenna on the satellite. And uh, because their space is limited, uh, we will say that they gain of the transmit antenna is equal to zero and typically uh, we the units are <coughs> referenced to uh, an isotropic source this also characterizes our receive antenna and the gain of that in our example today is 14 dBi all right and all this goes to our satellite over here all right, and it has a power, a transmitted power, and in our example, let's assume that it's one watt. And from previous videos, we know that that is uh, is 30 dBm. So our first task is to figure out is to calculate the received signal level or the carrier piece in the equation signal over noise. So let's do that. And here's a good reason why you like to use uh, dBs and dBms because now the calculation gets to be just an addition. So we start here at the transmitter at 30 dB. Okay, we encounter an antenna and it and it produces no gain so the antenna gain over here is zero. All right. Now, as the signal leaves the satellite, it's got to traverse 2,000 miles. All right. So it, the signal is going to lose. And let me just start to write some units in here. Free space loss. It's going to start to lose energy. All right. And from previous videos, we learned that the free space loss is a function of some constant times 20 times the log of the frequency uh, in gigahertz and that's this quantity right here plus 20 times the log of the distance d in miles and that's this distance here so if you plug those numbers in it turns out that is that you lose 155 db at this point all right so now it's kind of we, we started out life as one watt. We uh, squirted it out equally 
well in all directions, so we didn't gain any directions, any gain. So now the signal has traversed 2,000 miles and it's lost quite a lot. The next thing it does, it hits a fairly large antenna. And the gain on this antenna is 14 dBi. All right. So how much signal gets to this point? Well, it's just the, just the sum of those above numbers. And that turns out to be uh, minus 111 dBm. So now we have calculated the, the carrier of the, of the noise ratio of C over N. So the carrier is this quantity here. So that the signal at the receiver is this number. Now let's think about the noise. Right? Oop, we forgot to draw in the background noise. This thing looks up into the sky over here. And if it's up at about 30 degrees, and we're not pointing into the sun, and we're not looking at a particularly hot galaxy, typical sky temperature is 30 degrees Kelvin. All right? So what are our noise sources? Well, we got the antennas looking into this uh, cold sky, and it sees some of the noise. And internal to the receiver, this amplifier generates some noise. All right now, uh, we use we turn noise into its equivalent temperature, and we come up with a number, a, a quantity called system temperature, or T sub s. All right, and it just turns out to be the sum of the sky noise, which is 30 degrees Kelvin, and the uh, plus the noise in the amplifier which happens to be 100 degrees Kelvin. So T sub S is equal to 130 degrees Kelvin. All right. Now we need to convert that to a power. And Planck at the turn of the century told us that the amount of power generated by something that's equivalent to 130 degrees Kelvin and we're going to write the dBm formula of that thing. Power in dBm's is equal to uh, 10 times the log of kBt. And because this is in dBm's, we're going to reference 1 milliwatt. So let's put the numbers in here. So that is 10 times the log of Boltzmann's constant, which is 1.38 times the bandwidth, which is 20,000 hertz, times the temperature, which is 130 degrees Kelvin. And that's reference to 1 milliwatt. If we do all the math, that turns out to be minus 100 and 30 dBm. All right, I snuck in the bandwidth over here. Uh, you got to know something about your modulation and uh, a little bit about uh, Shannon's theory. And it just turns out that if your data rate, uh, if your data rate is about 10k, bits per second, your bandwidth required to transmit that FSK is 20,000 hertz. So that's where this term, the bandwidth, came from. So this is dependent, the bandwidth is dependent on the data rate, the data modulation type, and that by Shannon describes how much bandwidth you need. So now we have calculated our C over N. So our C over N is that the carrier or the signal noise ratio is equal to in the log form is the carrier minus the noise, which turns out to be 
uh, minus 111 minus 134, oops, this is a 4 over here, 134, which gives us a positive ratio of 23, which is this quantity right here. All right, so the receiver produces a signal noise ratio of 23. The, mar the modem performs up the specification at 14. So the difference between this and 14 is this number. This is called the link margin. All right, and if this number is greater than zero, then the circuit works and we say the link closes. If that's less than zero, we say the link doesn't close and we got to go choose something different. Now look at all these variables in here. As a radio engineer, you get to choose these. You get to choose the frequency. Uh, the distance is probably given to you, uh, but you can change the power. You can change the uh, antenna gain at, at, at the transmitter. You can change the antenna gain at the receiver. You can perhaps design a better amplifier that doesn't make quite as much noise. You can pick a different modulation scheme or data rate and change this. So all of these variables, all these variables affect how well this system will work. Well, hell.